so the third layer is called the stroma and this stroma layer is also known as the substantia propria right this layer is also known as substantia propria right and this substantia propria or this stroma contains what first of all it contains lots of cells and those cells are called the keratocytes keratocytes right then the next important thing it contains lots of collagen fibers collagen fibers right and these collagen fibers have arranged in a very special manner and that is called the lamini lamini and there are about 200 laminis so let me write here 200 lamini and let me show you how look carefully friends i will show you with with my fingers or i will show you here another diagram look for example this is one layer right these are the collagen fibers like this right behind this layer behind this layer there is another horizontal layer right there is another horizontal layer of these collagen fibers so they have arranged in a very special manner so that they will allow the light to pass in a special pattern right like this and behind that layer there will be another vertical layer and behind that there will be another horizontal layer so all these uh, layers are arranged in this manner for example this is the anterior vertical layer this is the posterior horizontal layer then there is post, uh, vertical layer then there is horizontal layer then there is vertical and horizontal so they make special lamini so this is vertical lamini this is horizontal lamini then again vertical lamini then again horizontal lamini so there are uh, about 200 laminis found by these collagen fibers and through those fibers the light rays are passing right done so they contain what they contain fibers collagen fibers and these collagen fibers are arranged in lamination like this so they make horizontal and vertical lamine done then there is the fourth layer and behind the stroma there is another collagenous layer and this collagenous layer is called the dismiss membrane right which membrane the dismiss membrane so let me write it here the fourth one dismiss membrane right and this dismiss membrane is composed of collagen fiber and some elastic fibers also so first of all we should know that it contains some collagen fibers right and number two it contains also some elastic fibers right and also some uh, cells which are present here uh, fibrocytes are present here in this dismiss membrane so fibrocytes are also there so this is the composition of the dismiss membrane look here the dismiss membrane the fourth layer the black layer as i have shown in this diagram this dismiss membrane gives some fibers which enter the sclera you can see here this is the sclera as we have shown it a little larger so here also this is our sclera so this dismiss membrane gives fibers and these fibers enter the sclera so that it makes attachment between the sclera and the cornea right so this was the dismiss membrane then the fifth layer the most important layer is called the endothelium and this endothelium is composed of <laughs> hexagonal shape epithelial cells these are the hexagonal shape cells and these cells have a very 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 important role in the structural integrity of the cornea they have they play their very important role and what is that role i will show you there so there is the 
fifth layer and this fifth layer is called the endothelium right the endothelium is composed of what it contains the hexagonal epithelial cells right and these epithelial cells work as pumps special pumps which pump the watery substances from the stroma of the cornea and I will show you that there so look carefully friends about the structure of the cornea we know that cornea is composed of an outer epithelium so let's let's know about this and that diagram also okay so look carefully the first layer outer epithelium let's go there and we will zoom our camera a little bit look there is the outer epithelium you can see here the outer surface cells or the squamous cells which type of cells squamous cells and we say that there are many layers so we say stratified squamous right so let me write it with the red color there is the stratified squamous epithelial cells right so one thing which is very important here we should write that there are basal cells wing cells and surface cells so there are many cells so we should know that it is made up of stratified and the outer layer the outermost layer is the squamous layer that's why we said stratified squamous epithelial cells right and you can see here the outer layer cells look carefully if I try one cell and write here that cell is like this this is the squamous cell and it has some outer projections and these outer projections are called the villi like this right like this this is the nucleus of the cell and with these projections finger like projections they hold the water or fluid particles with their cells so that to keep wet the cornea so they keep wet cornea the, our cornea is wet why because these outer layer cells are the squamous cells and these squamous cells have special type of projection outward projections right these are called the cilia and through these cilia they hold the water molecules with each other and uh, they keep the cornea wet so when we blink our eyes right we do not feel any difficulties right so the the outer surface of the cornea contains the water particles the water molecules the fluid particles right who hold these fluid particles the outer squamous cells and these outer squamous cells contain these uh, villi and these villi help to hold those water particles right and then in the base of this uh, outer epithelium you can see these are the columnar shaped cells right so we say these are the basal columnar cells column nor cells right and the outer cells are the uh, are the squamous cells and in between them there are the wing cells right so we say that these are the wing cells done whenever there is any damage to the outer epithelium these columnar cells the basal cells will fastly regenerate fastly through mitosis they will fill the gap again and the cornea will be regenerated and the epithelium will be regenerated and the cornea will be kept safe right so this is the outer epithelium done so how many layers there are five to six layers that i have told you uh, before then beneath the uh, epithelium right or posterior to the epithelium you know that this is the, the the blue layer right and this blue layer is called the bowman's layer Bowman's layer or we say Bowman's membrane we can also say that Bowman's membrane or Bowman's layer so we should write Bowman's membrane and uh, about the Bowman's membrane I have uh, discussed at there that that is acellular and it contains collagen fibers you can see it here then the third layer and this third layer is the thickest layer the thicker most layer 
and this layer is called the stroma of the cornea and the stroma of the cornea you, I, I told you that it contains the keratocytes so there are some keratocytes cells present there and these cells are very important here sometimes these cells inflame that is called the keratitis the disease is called the keratitis right so they contain keratocytes then they contain collagen fibers and these collagen fibers are arranged in lamina so you can draw those lamina like this right like this so i told you that there can be 200 lamina in the uh, stroma of uh, that uh, cornea and i told you that they are arranged in a vertical and horizontal lamina like this so there are 200 lamina and through these 200 lamina the light can pass and hit the lens and then towards the uh, retina of the eye so done this was the stroma of the cornea and about the composition of stroma i have written here then there is the fourth layer and this fourth layer this black layer is called what this is called the dismiss membrane so that is the dismiss membrane right and this dismiss membrane is very important and it contains what if we have written here it contains some fibrocytes and elastic fibers and collagen fibers and then there is the innermost layer and this innermost layer is called the endothelium right this is called the endothelium and this endothelium is composed of hexagonal shaped cells epithelial cells and what is their function i have written that they perform the function of pumps look carefully in this stroma of the cornea there are fluids we know that there are some fluids okay but there should not be more fluids if the fluid amount is more there if the fluid concentration become high then this structural integrity of the cornea that it contains these lamina these lamina will be loosened right this lamina will become loosened and the spaces between these the special type of spaces the gaps between them which they contain and through which the light rays pass those spaces will become loosened and the light will not be able to pass through that and the light cannot reach the retina and we cannot see the objects clearly who uh, pump out the water particles the fluid particles so these cells perform the special function of the pump and they pump out the water or the fluids the extra fluids i'm talking about the extra fluid from the stroma of the cornea and and uh, pour them into the anterior chamber or the aqueous chamber of the eye right so this was about the epithelium uh, sorry endothelium of the cornea and friends this was about the structure of the cornea and another thing from where does all these cells get their nourishment right as i have told you here that the cornea is avascular but still there are some cells in the cornea that should be uh, nourished that should be provided with special type of nutrition so from where does these cells get their nutrition and about these cells the interior uh, epithelium of the cornea from where do they get their nourishment so i will write here some important points about the nourishment of the cornea that is the cornea gets the the, the nourishment from where look carefully let me write here about nourishment of the cornea look here uh, <coughs> in the sclera there are some blood vessels which come and these blood vessels make loops here these blood vessels make loops here and these loops provide nourishment to the cornea to the stroma of the cornea and these are called the perilimbal blood vessels or vessels perilimbal vessels so first group of vessels which provide nourishment to the cornea these are called the peri limbal vessels done then 
from next important point from where do they get nourishment as you can see if i'm looking at you my both eyes are open and my eyes are in contact with the atmosphere right so from the atmosphere oxygen right enters these cells right so the outer epithelium gets their oxygen from outer environment so oxygen is provided to the outer epithelium from the environment also but we don't say that all the oxygen is provided from that point look here the oxygenated blood comes and um, through diffusion all the nutrients come here and enter from inner side and from outer side also right so we say from outer environment from outer environment also oxygen is binded to the outer epithelium right and they are uh, nourished and the third important point from where uh, they get their nourishment and that is called here is a chamber if i draw an eye again here a small a very small eye here look right and this is the cornea and you can see here is the vitreous chamber right here is the lens of the eye this is the vitreous chamber and this is the aqueous chamber so in the aqueous chamber there are fluids so cornea from inside also gets its nourishment from the aqueous chamber or aqueous humor right so they get their nourishment from the perilimbal vessels from the outer environment and from the aqueous chamber right friends this was all about uh, cornea right so the structure of cornea and the important points regarding the cornea so friends inshallah in the next lecture we will start discussing about the structure and composition of the sclera so be with us till then allah hafiz